saying I liked it. Yeah, so now I eat peppers. It's just... Uh... Oh, since then, because you didn't eat veg. No, I never ate veg. <laughs> I'll make you more veg. You'll, you'll love veg. If you come over and stay with me for a bit, you'll, you'll just love veg. I, I cook veg to perfection. I think you cook veg just to make up for all the other crap that you eat. Well, depends when and when, when and where. I mean, at the moment, as I'm not getting ready for anything in particular. Yeah, not getting ready for, we've got a game against France in June. Yeah, yeah. It's not World Cup, though, is it? It's a friend. <laughs> I can't show them how good I actually am. I've got to be kind of shitty and then surprise them at World Cup. <laughs> right. You know. right, so I'll, I'll, I'll start the intro anyway. It's all about strategy, mate. Strategy, yeah, just a false sense of security. Yeah. So what's your intro going to be like? Hello, I'm, just, I'm not going to introduce me. I'm, I'm, I'm going to big, I'm gonna big you up. That's what I'm going to do. Pardon? I'm going to big you up. Go ahead then, mate. Top right, 10 right, so. in the world, 2017. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm joined by Sebastian Bikara. No, no, no. Sorry, mate. Bellawara. Thank you. <laughs> you joined England in 2015 at Wheelchair Rugby League, didn't you? I did. Was that your in first one? Oh, 2015, what? I met at the time it was Phil Roberts in March 2015 when we came over to play um, against Leyland Warriors with, with Catalan. For the the European Cup in Preston, we played. Yeah, yeah the, lovely the game. Unofficial European Cup, you mean? Unofficial European Cup that we won <laughs> against Leyland and Preston. I was captain for that game, actually. Forty thirty, we won. I remember. Well, and that's when they called me captain. over to come and have a huh? Catalan let you be captain. Well, mainly because it was English refs and I, I was the only one that could speak English. You know? <laughs> so they just needed you to be able to talk to the referees? Yeah, basically. Story of so, life, yeah, innit? Obviously. Yeah. So yeah, also, yeah. Seb, you're a European champion. Not just at club, Double. But international. Double. Level. Yeah. Unofficial and official. <laughs> and one thing that most people don't know about you is you actually play the trumpet professionally is I, that right i do professionally yeah yeah well i've been playing the trumpet for many many years now i started back when i was living in england which was you know i moved to france when i was nine or ten so long time back and um at the moment it suits me very well because it allows me to travel to england when i need to uh for, for england training or whatever because it's not like a lot of people have a fixed job and they just can't get off that easy. Whereas I, I can just tell them, right, I need to be replaced this weekend. I've got, a, got an England camp, so um, then I can just, you know, get organised and, and be there for rugby, which is which is nice. And I have time for training and stuff during the day and whatever, and time for the rest, you know, family and friends. That's good. But so um, it's, uh, how do, how how does it work exactly in terms of employment? Are, are you employed by the the band or are you? Like a self so, self employed basis or work for ca- like cash in hand yeah, kind so of thing. I guess I'm I'm self employed, like a like I'm a musician, self employed musician, and then and then bands. I've, I've got a, an official band that I play with most of the time, and then people can just call me and I'll, I'll book me and I'll, I'll play for them or whatever. And, but I don't only do concerts and stuff. There's all, also recordings and you know orchestras and stuff like that that we I have to join as well and. Um, we make CDs for some people, you know, like there's a guy that's making a CD and he's a singer and uh, he needs some, some, uh, oh God, what's that? <laughs> yeah. For those, he needs that, some, uh, for those that are listening, we're just, we're just popping up a picture of uh, Sebastian no. when he's playing trumpet at Christmas. What are you dressed yeah, as no, there? So that, that will, I was actually undressed by then, but that, that's one of my bands and it's a kind of a festive rock band. And we actually, at the moment, which we change every year, we're dressing up as uh, garden, what do you call them, garden gnomes or whatever. So I did have a big beard on and some glasses and the hat and whatever, but I, by then I took everything off because it was getting, it was the, the, the festival of beer or something, playing for that occasion. 
and uh, we took it was just very very warm and took everything off. But yeah, we looked ridiculous. That's the whole point. Yeah, well, it was supposed to be fun, isn't it? Yeah, I'll I'll let you off for that, but I, I won't let it down. So, mate, if I if I get, I can find loads of pictures of you the way you look. Completely <laughs> just, just yeah, saying. That's the best thing about these these video conferences. You're not allowed to share anything. I've got all the power. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't dare try. I've never used this app before. Anyway. Yeah, that's well, how I go. get you. You can beat this out. But let's go back to the beginning. Oh, we just caught Jade over here. Hi, Jade. <laughs> so we um. We'll go right to the beginning. So when you, when your accident, you had a, a bike accident, didn't you? So we were talking to, accident. yeah, yeah, we were talking to James Hazel um, Saturday or Sunday, and the, he's the same. He was a, he was in a bike accident. But yeah, what, he bounced uh, off. How how did you how did yours go? And I'll I'll wear them up against James's. I think his was probably worse because I I. So I was 18 at the time. I've always been a big fan of, uh, of uh, motorbikes and um, been on one since I was quite young, like smaller one. And then when I was 18, I got the bigger license. So I bought um, the Kawasaki 650, big bike, much faster anyway. And um, so this it's a very, very sunny day as it is where I live in Perpignan, very sunny. It was uh, the 12th of July, so in the middle of the summer. And it was like 6 p.m. So the, 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 like, the, the sun was starting to go down and I had it in my eyes couldn't really see anything and I was on this 90 kilometer road like 90 kilometer limit and um just arrived behind a truck and the truck by seeing me they, they kind of, in France they just kind of let you pass they go on the side to let you overtake so he, he did that and actually I just overtook without even um thinking about it really and then um so far ahead I could see cars but just looked at like they were going the same speed as me and then um so just like very last second realized that they were all at a complete stop and had to jump on the brakes and then i kind of managed to dodge uh the cars there but then landed on the floor kind of broke my leg falling on the floor on the other side of the road and then this car that was coming managed to stop like a meter away from me which is where i'm lucky compared to james who got bashed around all over the place and um and then i was really lucky because so my arch my femoral artery was was like section kind of thing and um this guy in the car that managed to stop right in front of me he was ex-military so he knew all about this stuff and came over and stuck my leg back on and kind oh, of shit. did a pressure point yeah and he, he saved my life because there was loads of people around me i, I stayed conscious and the the view was awful i mean blood you know but like kill bill kind of blood splurts blowing all over all over the place and um and no one no one was doing anything everyone was like kind of shocked and no one would move kind of thing. I wouldn't, and, and I, I wouldn't know what to do in that situation. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But you just, the stress the, the, of, of the moment, it just blocks you, just freeze and you don't do anything. And then this guy just like came running and shouted to someone, oh, I called the, call the ambulance or whatever. And well, I was Pompier here in France. And um, yeah, he saved my life. And then, um, so then that night had surgery for about nine hours trying to save my legs. So they had to, replaced my artery by the by a vein so they took a vein out of my my leg and then replaced the artery with the vein and then uh you know all sorts of things to try and fix the bones one of them tried to save my leg for about a month which was probably the worst month in my life but you know and then uh after a month they just said like, it's not possible and cut it off which was huge relief in the end because i lost i mean in in the amount of pain i was having for that month the the the, the, the fact of cutting it off just was huge relief i could i was free again kind of thing so yeah I've, that's I've, how i lost it i've talked to uh well, i met a lot of people in the wheelchair basketball in the past and they, they've all had um issues with the legs from injuries and things like that where they've been able to save the leg but they, they're stuck with chronic pain and exactly they, they, yeah, yeah they go they go to their doctors and and they're begging them to amputate and and the doctors are always like no, no, we can, we, we've got the leg on it. We, we need to see if it'll it'll take and stuff like that. But there's a lot of people who, who are better off for amputation sort of thing. I know. So I, I, I think I was lucky in the fact that my there was many reasons for for them cutting it off. But one of the main ones was that it was seriously infected. And if they didn't cut it, I would have probably died 
and and that was one of the you know main pushing reasons that that they cut it off and i think that was very lucky because if, if it wasn't infected even if it was in a bad state i would have probably chosen oh please i want to keep my leg i want to keep my leg because just naturally you want to keep your body intact whereas if i had actually kept my leg i'd probably be nowhere near as as able as i am right now kind of thing because i mean with this this prosthetic i've got a brand new one you haven't even seen it, actually oh, have, it. have you got it have you got it there yeah, yeah. Well, of course you have it stuck to your leg <laughs> yeah. Ooh. top class so That's yeah so better can, than that you know. um scrap that scrap scrap metal you had before yeah exactly so i, I mean I, I run i do hikes and stuff you know last year i went to all around south america for six months hiking all over going up volcanoes and stuff i do i can do any sport canyoning surfing wake i mean everything and i'm pretty sure if i stuck my proper leg i think i've got a picture of that to uh, show uh off. there you are oh yeah i've got, got you well prepared mate that was in uh, bolivia bolivia in the center of south america and it was called la laguna de las volcanes i won't repeat so they that call it, they call it the volcano laguna just you know to attract tourists but there's no actually volcanoes it's just oh, so there is no volcano but they call it a volcano yeah, there's no volcanoes there, just mountains, mate. But it was it was beautiful. Nice hike. Look, it looks it, mate. It looks it. Yeah, yeah. Was the walk hard? Getting up there? Yeah, well, so that day was... It wasn't the hardest I did, but um, that was just a day trip. So that was... I think we probably walked about four hours or five hours. Maybe. Maybe a bit more. Uh, I know we had a break to uh, have a swim in, in the river very muddy river that was uh, over there by the side we had a guide so um in bolivia everything was cheap so having a guide for the full day was maybe you know four pounds yeah. four pounds for a guide for the day yeah something like that maybe, maybe we're, less. We're, we're, actually. we're going to rome the uh, end of this week and i'm like maybe rome. we need to go there instead yeah Ro- rome's rome's not that cheap but, you know, no, definitely not cheap. Definitely not cheap. We've, we've looked yeah, into yeah. it. We're screwed. I guess you'll have nice pasta and pizza there. Caniloni. Oh, mate, we've done loads of research. We know exactly where we're going. We've, we've got the whole week planned. We know oh, where yeah. we're going each day, what we're doing. We, we, there is no, like, spontaneous... Oh, yeah, you asked me about it as well, didn't you? The yeah, what, sorry? I remember now. You asked me about it not long ago. Was it Jade that asked me about it? I can't remember. It was probably yeah. Jade. I'm, I'm not organised like that to think ahead and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Jade contacted me and I, I gave her a bit of info. I've been there a few times. Cheap Ryanair flight, hey? <laughs> yeah. So when you got started in wheelchair sports did was wheelchair rugby league the first sport you started playing um well i was in a in a rehab center down where i live and um so the first wheelchair sport i actually played was wheelchair basketball o- only in the center and um so it was just you know messing around with other people that just had an accident or very disabled people so at the time i thought i was you know amazing with the wheelchair i thought i was really fast really good because I was playing against people that were just very, very bad. And, um, and, and so, so, you know, Cyril Torres, who was you know, French, French national captain at the time and Dragon Catalan, Catalan Dragon captain at the time. He, um, he worked for this company that sold wheelchairs and he came over to the rehab center to sell some wheelchairs and whatever. And then he saw me. And uh, so we had a chat and he said, oh, you should come over and try uh, wheelchair rugby. We, we play at Perpignan and you can come have a try. It's not the same though. We we have real proper good wheelchairs and proper people playing. I thought, oh yeah, sure. So I thought I would be, you know, really good to come over and I'm actually up against these people like Lolo, Nico, Cyril, Gilles. I'm I'm just a beginner getting in a chair and I'm playing against these guys who were like were just about to be world champions. Because this this was an, I joined in January 2013. Oh no, you didn't. So just a couple of months before the uh, the World Cup, and uh, so I was training with these just soon to be world champions, and obviously I was nowhere near as good as they were, and, and it was, but it would just it made me progress a, a very very quickly because I was learning with at the time what was the best, the best in France, yeah. Oh, they're supposed to be the best in the world, aren't they? To, uh, whatever, whatever. <laughs> Mate, you was on the losing team too. <laughs> I was four years later, but you know, 
I was on the winning team two years later. Yeah. Right, so I'm, I'm going away from that because I don't want to cry. So the first time you played for England, was that the Four Nations? It was, wasn't it? No. Was it not? Or did you do Euros first? Euros first. I, so thought, I, I, I thought the Four Nations was before that. Didn't play in the Four Nations before that. No, I, so I, I, I did the European Cup against Leyland in March 2015 and then joined England after that kind of thing. Started doing the training with, with England. So my first competition with England was, was the Euros. Oh, not a bad way to start then, is it? No. So that first, first game we had on that Wednesday night against France, which was the, the Kilty Fasolet Cup that we uh, won with flying colours and then and then um, and then we ended up finishing the Euros you know how it ended you were very happy to score that final try yes I, I can I can mimic you <laughs> <laughs> what you did yeah the, um... golden point see I kind of forgot about that now I'm more just filled with rage from 2017 yeah obviously me too I, I completely forgot about it as well yeah. but yeah so that was my first time with England and then and then did the Four Nations the year after that 2016 yeah yeah that's just me not paying attention mate like that's all I know well well I wasn't allowed to play in that one you weren't I wasn't supposed to either but then I I kind of complained as I've never done it before please could I (laughs) and uh and you know they let me Mm. and and I when when you started playing for England then what? How was the reaction from your Catalan teammates and all the the, the French? Because obviously you were you're playing in the French league and you're you're close with them guys. So how do they react yeah. to you joining were, as much as you're in England? About it. Yeah, yeah. Well, they were very happy about it. It was actually Cyril that helped a lot for me to get in the England team. Cyril, um, Cyril was the one that contacted Phil Roberts and everything, and and made a point about me being English and that I wanted to play for the England team kind of thing. So um, they're all very happy for me and, uh, and uh, we're all looking forward to playing against me in a, in a game because we always play together kind of thing. So, it was, um, so it what was were their reactions like after you beat them? Oh, you know. <laughs> oh, you English, you cheat. Your refs, they, you know, they're cheating. Or whatever, or whatever. Ridiculous decisions from the refs. Yeah, it was... Half the team was missing, blah, 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 with a French accent, blah, 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 French. <laughs> so, uh, that was obviously their reaction. What, um, what was your, your mum family's reactions, kind of, like your English, you, you, you have got friends over here in England before you started playing wheelchair rugby league as well, were they inv- involved in following you when you when you said first oh yeah 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 a lot a lot of them came over to watch the game a lot a lot of them helped actually during the um, the the training towards european the european cup because i had to fly over obviously for every camp but um flight flights wouldn't be so easy to like fly in do the training fly out i would have to fly in the day before two days before and then the day after or two days after so i would go and sleep at friends or family or whatever so um a lot of people that helped me towards the European Championships, and then uh, so obviously all very, very supportive and uh, very happy for me. And uh, my mum was obviously, you know, ecstatic. She was uh, amazed of the kind of where I was like, like after having been amputated two years before that or three years before that. So I got, yeah, I got a lot of time for you, mum. Your mum's a lovely woman. Happy times, yeah. She just got back from England, yeah. She was. Oh, she been over. My grandmother, yeah. Oh. Helping out. So there were, there were one story that I wanted to talk about to sort of dub you in, and peppers? T- talking about the no, not the peppers. I don't want to talk about the peppers. The uh, was your experience during the European Championships. What was what was the the worst thing you got in trouble for what during the European Championships? <laughs> um, why did I get in trouble? Well, I was I was getting on well with Joe Coy, uh, who is the son of Big Boss Martin Coy, and um, 
during national I'm, I'm a musician obviously we've talked about that earlier on and uh so i pay attention to you know um and, and and key and exactly a tune. and uh we were singing national anthem and i had behind me i think it was nathan holmes and behind me to the right was joe coy and both of them i think both of them are tone deaf <laughs> And they were seeing it was awful. It, it, it was, I mean, it just, I, I like, I remember turning back, looking at them and saying, what are you doing? And, uh, and then it just made me laugh and laugh and laugh. And then I just burst out laughing. But I, I, I was very ashamed by it. And I kind of put my head down so no one would notice. Um, but so everyone thought I was crying at first until everyone realized I was actually just laughing out loud kind of thing. Yeah. I got in trouble for that. And uh, and then and then for a few other things, I think just messing around with Joe. So then I was <laughs> told I wasn't allowed to go and sing the national anthem with my team. I had to do it on the side in the dark. In there the dark. <laughs> it was in the dark. Joe and I had to go on. You had to be separated. Like, it was like like two naughty school kids, and it's like you sit on the left, you sit on the right, you stay away from each other. You're both a bad right. influence. We were just happy, you know. So we, we, we kind of um, talked about that a lot with Martin Gill afterwards, who was the one that, you know, punished us. And we, we hold that against him for quite a few years. Still do. I hate you, Gill. Yeah, I actually you, wrote a song about it, didn't I? Yes, yeah, I was just going to say, yeah, you uh, wrote a song about him, didn't you? Just remembering it now. Yeah. Yeah, do you have a piano a there? I do, downstairs, yeah. <laughs> but that's for another time. Not song again. <laughs> Yeah. So, when were you staying with us? Was that before the Euros or before the World Cup? With you at your place, you mean? Yeah. World Cup. That was World Cup. Was that before 2017? Yeah. Yeah, so you were staying with us in, during 2017. Where do you think... Um. England deserve to come in the World Cup 2017? Where do I think they deserve to come? Uh, well, it's difficult to say. I definitely think it's top two, obviously. And then I think the game was slightly unfair, kind of biased, obviously, with there being three French refs out of four. And uh, and no English ref. Um, I mean, we're by so no some... means saying that the um, nothing's fixed or anything like that kind of thing. We're just um, obviously the it, in uh, a World Cup final in France. That's the odds that are stacked against you. You've got a crowd of all them people, haven't we? That's huge crowd against us. Uh, refs. French toes. I'm not saying it was fixed, just saying, you know, it was, it was slightly biased because, you know, when a decision could go either way, it obviously always goes. It's the 50 50 decisions that make the difference, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so very difficult game. I mean, but then, then again, if we really were really deserving and much better than them, I think we could have beat them anyway, even with the, the biased decisions. So <clears throat> I think we, uh, We'll deserve it next time in 2021. We have to work towards that. And do, oh, definitely, do definitely. I mean, when when I talk to, time. excuse me, when I talk to Wayne, he, he um, is adamant and he he won't um, deviate from it. He still he says we won 2020, uh, 2017. Uh, I don't know how he's how he's got that mindset, but he, he actually does believe we won the World Cup in 2017. <laughs> I like to believe so sometimes as well, but yeah. he just says we won, but we didn't get a trophy. Yeah, nor a medal. And we just left it there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you were staying with well, us I, in the I, lead I up. His, Go on. I understand his his point of view because you know we, if you watch it back, and I've watched it back a lot of times now, um, you just see how many errors were not counted and how many you know things were kind of weird decisions and then you've got one of Ryan's tries that, that were disallowed and, and, and uh, Martin Lane's 
try that was disallowed. Um, and then you've got the weird, that one of their weird tries where Fabian like headbutts it and then scores off that when we had all stopped playing because we thought it was a knock on. And then, and then a forward pass from Fabian to Danny, I think, was one of the actions as well. Mm. And everyone saw it was a forward pass, but it was considered as as nothing. So, um, I mean, I, I definitely get what Wayne's saying. We, we, in a way, we should have won it, and then, but you know, we didn't. So, we just have to work harder and, and be mm. much better than them at the next World Cup. I think the best way to look at it is it is what it is, and we get another chance in 2021. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We just, we just have to focus on next World Cup. I mean, we can't talk about 2017. In, in 20 years, we won't say, yeah, we won in 2017. People will look up on the internet and say, no, you didn't. French did. So, yeah, yeah well. And then, uh, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah so, we, we, was, a, we, we had a really good build-up for the World Cup, didn't we? We had a really good uh, build-up. We were lots of training involved. You, you were coming over. You were staying with us, obviously. I so yeah, I, I came over to to stay most possible with you. So I came over what for over a month, and obviously there was already the the training that I was coming to. It was every three weeks or something. But then um, just before the summer, I, I came to stay with you, so I could we could train weekly. With we had this kind of weekly England training up in, in Leeds, didn't we? So um, yeah, because you were playing with. It was, uh, uh, we, we were we were, the training sessions were at Morley, weren't they? At Leeds is Leeds venue. Yeah, because you were playing for Leeds yeah, I, that season. Definitely helped a lot because not only did we play better together thanks to that, but I think on an indi- individual point, um, I think you all helped me get my wheelchair <laughs> on, on the right track kind of thing. I had very bad straps and very all sorts of bad stuff, and 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 changed my wheels and changed all sorts. And it it made me a much better player. Can um, you just point out to the people um, when? So obviously you came in, you had the, your chair, and I remember I remember because you're on them um, them day chair tires, and the, yeah. The, the, yeah, the ones with the loads Narrative. of really deep grit grip. I remember yeah, Wayne just like saying, "Get them off your tires now," sort of thing. But he, um, for the people who are listening or watching. How much? How important actually is it for the straps and the chair setup? How how much can that actually change your your game? Changes everything. I mean, on a, on an individual point of view, because this is not talking about team team play, but this is like your own personal skills kind of thing. To be well strapped in in your chair, to be one with the wheelchair, it just helps you so much in 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 how you can move your chair. You can. You, it's just. Basically, if you watch a great player, I like to watch is Jack Brown, and he can he can move all over the place with his wheelchair, and and Shucks. that comes comes from a good straps, which will definitely help you improve on a personal point of view. And then and then the tires, obviously. I mean, I I, I changed the marathons for two foes, which were, you know, tubular tires, and uh, I gained in speed and control and everything as well. They're slightly more fragile, so now I'm, I'm in between with the Kenda, the red Kendas, I've got Calientes, um, which I find very, very good as well. Uh, so, yeah, very important to focus on your straps and stuff, mm. definitely. One big thing we always point out with our players when they get into the chairs for the first time or when they get a new chair, a lot of manufacturers will set your, your sports chair so that your anti-tips touch in the floor. Have you, have you oh, ever, yeah, ever seen that? The amount yeah, of times okay, that we have yeah. to change, lift the anti-tip up on players' chairs so that they have that little bit of tip. Because yeah. the, the easiest way to think of it is, it, it, yeah. the easiest way to think of it is you've got three wheels that are all the same level as your big wheel in the middle. As soon as you lift up your anti-tip, all of your weight is on them big wheels, and then you've got all the traction and all of the acceleration. So that, that, that's all the yeah. tips that we'll be giving anyway. We don't want to give away all our secrets, mate. We'll lose a spot on team. We'll lose our spot on the team, yeah. yeah. Definitely. Yeah. But we had a, a lot of uh, preparation for the World Cup in 2017 and stuff like that. And there was one story I did want to talk about, which was um, I still haven't heard from my cleaner. Would you like to tell that story? I don't think I remember it very well, mate. 
Oh, I do. <laughs> Go ahead. But, yeah. So I, 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 I'm away at work and Jade's away at work. Seb staying in the house. So he decided we were making his breakfast. And um, we, had, we had a cleaner for our house who came around every, every two weeks and it was like 20 pound. Great. We felt like, like bloody uh, aristocrats and we were able to, we felt like we were, we were royalty and we had, we had a cleaner. But our cleaner came around and she, she saw that someone was in the kitchen but she knocked on the door anyway and she was greeted at the door by a, a a guy just wearing nothing but underwear who were cooking uh, what was what did you say it were all our uh, bonjour lover or something like that bonjour lover what did you say i'm sure i'm sure oh, she opened the door or something and you were was like bonjour lover or something like that because you thought I'd come home early. Oh, maybe. Oh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe Needless to say, my cleaner excited. decided that she was never going to clean my house ever again. I jumped out half naked. Yeah, she, she was kind of afraid. Yeah. Well, she thought there I was like more than one it. person in my house when she talked to us. She did. She, no, she, she thought you were getting, getting robbed, though, didn't she? She thought I was getting yes, robbed or you was having an orgy in my house. Yeah. <laughs> God, Paul. And you've, you've never heard back from her? No. Nope. We've got to clean our own house now. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, one of the other points. Uh, you, you're still playing for Catalan. Yeah. Have you organised a game against Leeds? Still waiting uh, on them for that. So we've been pushing it as much as possible. Uh, but Leeds this year is, is, you know, like going with the, the governing body of the, of the actual Leeds team. So they, they're going to be the ones controlling all the finance and everything. So they're waiting on, I mean, the players all want to do the game. Uh, so they're just waiting on, on higher ups to... to allow the finances and say okay let's let's do this kind of thing so we're just waiting for an answer if if in the end they decide um there's no financing and it's not possible we'll we'll obviously offer the solution that we pay for everything and um and we fly over and just do a, a unique game against them in the venue of their choice like we did with halifax who still refused after that yeah, I know that. But we're we're, very, we're we're looking forward to it. I mean, I know the chairman on my side is is pushing and pushing and pushing, trying to make this happen. And um, we're just waiting, just waiting for for Leeds to to say yes. Yeah. And we hope they do because uh, I think it'll be a great game. I mean, well, I remember yeah. it'll be well before you started playing. We used to have a European league. Uh, it used to consist of uh, the Hall the English league was um, England, Bury, uh, Saint Helens, and everyone. And Catalan were in that league as well. So everyone in 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 England was playing Catalan, uh, a home and away game. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, Catalan ended up winning that season. What? What in a wheelchair? Yeah, in the wheelchair. Yeah, it were it will been two or three years before you started, I reckon. Oh, 2011, when they beat you in the finals? Yeah. Okay. I've yeah. got the trophy at home with that. Oh, do you? I've got the trophy at home. It says, against Halifax. I don't know why I've got it, but I've got it. It's on my wall. You weren't even there. I know. Well, I remember that, because we, we, we'd gone over, and, and we'd, we'd already beat Catalan once at home, and we worked it out that, at that time, there were never there were no grand finals, so we was um, we had to we went over there to play our final fixture, and we was like it doesn't matter if we lose or win, we 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 we're top of the league with one. So we went over there in this with this mentality of we we're already top of the league, they can't go past us because we've got too many points on them. And then it was then when you guys decided that we were having a grand final after that because obviously you guys were second and we played a second game which we lost 
the, so we played one game which meant nothing and then we played another game the next day which which we lost in and there's a there's a funny story Stuart Walker who used to play for us he um, we'd gone over there and it was just after it wasn't long after um, the 08 World Cup and we had a, a massive telling off over there because of hydration none of us were hydrated enough um, they used to do like make us pee into cups and stuff and test us for how hydrated we were so. yeah. yeah and the um, Stuart had gone over and because it was so hot obviously in Perpignan he just before the game downed about four litres of water just necked it and after that he ended up throwing up he made himself sick we were over hydrated he wasn't able to play and once we'd lost obviously we we was on a bus and we had to get back as soon as possible so the flight was coming soon and we had to go outside we got into and there was like you need to get in the bus really quick we need to go we need to go we're going to miss the flight but Catalan had put out a, a mobile bar outside with serving San Miguel. So me and Wayne were both sat at the bar having having a beer with Cyril and, and Nico and stuff. Uh, but Stuart had got onto the van early. He'd done as he told because he's a good boy. And they dank, ratcheted him down. They ratcheted him into the, into the van and stuff. And I think we sat there for another half an hour drinking while Stuart was locked in the van. <laughs> Ill. Yeah, Stuart were locked in the van, bless him. Uh, some were beaming through the glasses. He was sweating his ass off, bless him. Yeah. And after, after that, Wayne nicknamed him, nicknamed him Camel. <laughs> Camel. Poor Stuart. Oh, I loved it. Poor Stuart. Yeah. But a lot, a, I mean, a, a lot's changed now. I mean, France have now got classification, haven't they? Yeah, so it's second season this has been going on now. Think. Yeah. Second season. Can so, tell, um, can you tell us exactly what happened? Well, if you know uh, exactly how the classification works over there, because yeah, so, so it's, it's something it's people are like to, guessing over here. Yeah, so it's similar to basketball in a way. So the, the maximum points is eighteen instead of fifteen. Basketball, yeah. yeah. So eight, eighteen, and then um, and then the actual classification is that that's where it's very weird. It actually depends on, on each person is 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 like particular, and um, you have to be seen by an official doctor. So basically, generally, uh, a, a single amp baloney amp is a four pointer. So you're uh, four. above me. I'm four. Able bodied is five, but there's there's no like and a half. So there's no four and a half, no three and a half, no two and a half. Uh, so below. No, above knee amp. So just same as me, single amputee, but above the knee is a three pointer. All right. Uh, a double amputee, like your brother, would would be two points. Really? Um, yeah. The so Harry would only be two points. Harry would be two pointer. And maybe maybe he's has he got a problem with his arm as well, or not at all? Well, he's got. Um hyperextension of the elbow so his elbow actually bends up to here and he's missing a pinky so he could he could classify to be two point uh one point maybe which is what, what how it. ridiculous it is yeah but, but people do that though there's the thing so there's some people that are just you know um what kind of example can I find? People that just walk badly, you know, like like Jody, for example, and and they've they've managed to say, oh, this hurts as well, and this hurts as well. So they're like three pointers, and we, we have, we're at Catalan, and we're having a big issue with this because we don't have any. We have mostly single amps, like Jill, me, and whatever, and um, so we have a lot of four pointers. And if you think about it, if you put five amputees on, on on the pitch you can't play it because that's four times other that's 20 that's over, over above the uh, so playing with five d's five disabled people you can't play the game um so there's i think there was two teams that actually had to stop playing in the championship because they just couldn't respect the rule and so we're having to play two people so if you remember joel lacombe who's a three-pointer uh because is he the he's new lost. double double amputee no, that's Arnold, Arnold Vargas. He's a two-pointer. Double amputee, two points. So he has... worth a point, isn't it? Yeah, he's good. 
he's, he's well he's so so he's a, he's a good upcoming french player he's um he's definitely got the rugby he's played rugby all his life uh he's just too much of an individual player at the moment to, for me i i i mean he's a friend obviously but um you know playing with him can some can, can sometimes be difficult because he doesn't do the fast tagging up he kind of will get contact and start waving around and turning around and, and they're not giving the ball I mean, it's just you lose a lot of time and uh and he, he he doesn't have the physical condition yet to to stay on for 80 minutes and he has to stay on for 80 minutes so he gets very tired and 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 doesn't perform as well as he could if he was playing just 40 minutes for example and same for as well who has to also stay on for 80 minutes and he he gets too tired and he's got a problem with his arm so his arm's blocked like that so he can't actually extend his arm which is another thing i find weird so he's got a disability with his arm but he he's considered more points than a dump, double amp, leg amputee where you have both their arms not a problem kind of thing um it's just weird anyway then well, I think Wayne, you know, like paraplegic people would be one pointers, uh, and that's it. So, and then, and then other categories they have to evaluate it, and then, and then it's just basically how how well you pay the doctor to get the the, the right amount of points. <laughs> so it's difficult. We we can't really play with um, two able-bodied people anymore, it's, it, I mean, because that that takes it's up not ten feasible. points. It's not and feasible. And then you would you would need you know, three double amps and, and not many people have that in their team. So Yeah, we said there this with um with Stuart Williams. We we're talking like it's there's a time when it has to come in, isn't there? There is. It, it yeah, eventually obviously, it has to has to happen. It has to happen one day. We're just not ready not not ready for it at all. Yeah, I think the, the trying to run before we can walk kind of thing. Yeah. I I think um in in France, they have new people that are leading kind of thing, and and they they really want to push it forward much quicker than than it should happen, and um, and and there are people coming from quad rugby, but so that this this one of the main guys behind this is a guy that comes from quad rugby, doesn't know a thing about rugby league, and and is pushing the fact that we have these classifications. Because he wants to to be fair for for more disabled play, players, mm. um, and it's unfortunate because I mean they could just stay in quad rugby and leave us alone, kind of <laughs> you know. Because it, it's it basically I mean, your. I mean, I think the best the best defense the, the best defense to that is to just. I, I, I don't like um, blowing Wayne's trumpet. Is to just say, look, Wayne's one of the top wheelchair rugby league players in the world. Cyril Torres is one of the best wheelchair rugby league players in the world. And they're lower points and they run ragged around ABs. Is it, is it a point where the classification is, and people are probably going to shout at me for this or give me some shit, but it's like, is there a point where the classification is more for awarding people with more disability rather than awarding uh, people for skill because they, they, you're better than most other single amputees. Wayne's better than most paraplegics. I'm yeah. better than most ABs, but that's, that's why the sport sort of picks us at the moment. But as soon as the classification comes in, is that where you sort of go in? That person's got to come in now because we're doing a classification and and we're we're going for equality, extreme equality. Yeah, well, definitely because we, you can't. I mean, if you think about it on on in Catalan, so the best players definitely the Clausels like Nico and Gilles, and you've got me and and you know Lolo, but we can't play together anymore. We can't play our stronger side anymore with these walls. So. You want to make the sport more inclusive and whatever, but or more equality. But, but then you you're taking away the the show kind of thing because you're forcing us to put less performing players on the team. And it's for a sport that's trying them. to grow, hmm? 
it's nothing it's nothing against against doing that because you you got to develop your players somewhere by getting them played sort of thing i think there's more of a no, but obviously but then i mean that's kind of in my opinion that's the coach's responsibility not not the whole governing body to make us play them more but right now with the actual rules where it's not just playing them a bit more so they can get more experience we're actually having to play them 80 minutes whereas you know whereas we would like can to cause a lot of problems as well yeah especially for and paraplegics we, and people with a more yeah. severe disability yeah they're not not all of them are capable of playing 84 minutes you see. and um so taking away the strongest side you take away from the show and and i think when we're, we're a sport that's growing and we want to be seen, we want, we want to be seen at our absolute best. We don't want to, we don't want to show, I mean, there's nothing bad against more disabled people, but we don't want to, you know, we don't want it to be boring kind of thing. And if, if you have a, a really strong team of single amps and ABs, but you, you can't play, so you have to bring someone, someone else and that's never done rugby before. And he's a one point, oh great, so we can, we can put him on the side. But that that's kind of taken away from 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 the show, in a way. I think the sport's still very young, is it? I mean, invented in two thousand and two yeah. in France, it only came to England in two thousand and five, really. And yeah. if you think of wheelchair basketball and and uh, even murder ball's been around a lot longer. Basketball, I think it was like the sixties or seventy seventies or something like that. Nineteen fifty two, I think something like nineteen forty two. 52, I think. 52, yeah. yeah. Something like that. Long time ago. But think of that, that that's over half a century of development and building we're and, and stuff. And, and we're, we're trying to be on a par with them after 10 years. 10, 15 years. Yeah, it can't happen. I think it's the focus at the moment has them. to be at, at the grassroots. It's got to be getting the games played, getting the the scope out there and showing the the videos and 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 what we're doing today talking about it and and letting people know what's going on sort of thing rather than trying to be something we're not i think the sport the sport just needs people to know about it and people to take part in it and yeah let it grow first and then we'll start all these classification rules i've got it under it it's actually started in 1946 1946 between, uh, american world war Disabled veterans, yeah. 1946 in the States. Hey, that is a ago. long time ago. That is a long, long time ago. The year after the war, just after the war, World War II. We can't compete with, with that development. That that's we, we won't, Like I said, we're only in it for just under 20 years, sort of thing. It's, we, yeah. it's amazing the point that Wheelchair Rugby League is at now. Just with yeah, yeah, the course. affiliation with the FFR, RFL, we've got all these things coming up. I mean, uh, the World Cup seventeen was amazing. How France did that? All of them live streams that they were doing. They've got the the looking at a BBC uh, getting involved. Is, so World Cup twenty twenty one, everything will be on on BBC. Yeah, red button. How how exciting is that? That's very very exciting. 2021 is, is is looking to be the best World Cup ever with uh, venues that are going to be just amazing. So we're like, us, the England team, will be playing our group games in, in London Copperbox Arena in, in London. So that's 7,500 seats, which is huge. Uh, if we get into the semi-finals, that's in Sheffield, and that's huge as well. I don't know how big. And then the finals is in Liverpool in the m and Arena, which is uh, 11... 11,000 seats, which is, is never, never done in World Rugby League really, ever. So it's going to be huge and then it's going to be streamed on internet. It's going to be on TV. It's going to, it's just going to be amazing. Amazing. It, it's just got a similar feeling to the London, London Olympics, hasn't it? I can't remember yeah. what year they, the year they were now. But 2012, 2012, yeah. Yeah, 2012 London Olympics. It's got that same kind of feeling of a big, like a massive, like, um, milestone that is going to be reached in, in terms of exactly. disability sports and, and, and awareness. All that, all that thanks to England that is pushing forward disability sports, which is, you know, a lot of respect to that. That's good. Very happy about it. Yeah, I can't wait, mate. 
I'm, I'm very excited. So, uh, so I, I've actually got to confess, I, I actually missed the first camp in the run-up for our next game, which is France in June. Obligatory camps. <laughs> Mr. Brown was on holiday. Yeah. I was looking after my niece and nephew. They well, needed me. to be fair with you, I, I can't be there on the 19th of May. What, the second one? The, the third. Oh, one. right, so I'll see you at the next one then. Yeah, I'll be there. I've booked my flight. I'm actually flying over on the last day of April. Uh, so I can go and do May morning in Oxford. Mm. Do you know what May morning is? Not a clue. So in, in Oxford and Cambridge, they um, they have a thing called May morning. So you get up at four in the morning and um, you go to the center of the, of the city. And uh, at five o'clock, there's, you know, this choir kind of singing on, on the on the top of the tower there and then there's bands and dancers all over the place and you start drinking beer at five o'clock in the morning no and and it just goes on all morning every single bar and pub and whatever is open and there's bands everywhere live music everywhere everyone drinking pints and pints and pints and pints and you so by 7 a.m or 8 a.m you've had about five six pints uh you start having breakfast, so you have your breakfast, you know, and sausage sandwich or something like that. And um and it goes on for the rest of the day. But you start at four in the morning. Everyone meets in the middle of the town at four at four AM. Why so, have I uh, my, my heard own, of this? I know. Well, come and join me. I'm, I'm, I'm my my uncle lives in Oxford. So I'm flying over to see him. And we'll do May morning together. And uh, and then I'll I think we have the camp in Sheffield, don't we? So then I'll, I'll come over to Sheffield. Sounds Did you know it was in Sheffield? No, I, I, they tell me the day before and then I'll just turn up. That's how I work. Yeah, yeah. I've got, I'm, in, I'm into the secrets, so I can't reveal too much. But yeah, next camp is in Sheffield. I think we probably already revealed too many secrets today, to be fair, mate. Yeah, <laughs> probably have. Yeah, we've probably been dropped already. We've already received the email. I know. Well, they can't do that yet. Can't replace us. Never Not say possible. never, never say never. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll, I'll call it a do there, mate, because one, I need Lovely. a pee, and one, I need some tea. I do too, yeah. I'm hungry. Yeah. Definitely but hungry. Thank you for talking to us, mate. I had... Um, I found out a lot about you. I talked about a lot of stuff I already knew about you. And Thank you. I would like to ask a question to, to to you. What what are you doing to get ready for World Cup? How's your nutrition going on? My your, nutrition, your gym gym sessions and stuff. I'm having to um, really knuckle down on my diet. To be honest, I I in the past have not had a good diet. I will skip meals. I some day, sometimes I can go all day and just have a, you know, a couple of bites of cheese, and I actually don't eat. So. That is my big thing at the moment is getting my diet on plan. Yeah, as you can tell, be- to get ready, mate. as you can tell, because I'm just skin and bones. Yeah, no, uh, none of this. <laughs> Did you lose that weight you put on? No, I put on a bit more actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling Wayne. So, I'm telling Wayne. Yeah, well, he knows. I had a call with him the other day. He invited me to his wedding. Mm. But um. Mm. I'm 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 not in the best of shapes at the moment because you know it's my my phase where I'm you know being tranquil, which means just not forcing too much. And then in, in the, starting from September, I've got two years to get ready. I think I'll I'll start the the, the proper diet. And um, what about June? Uh, well, June will be what it's like. I mean, June I'll I'll play well. And I just won't be at my personal absolute best. Will you? You're always at your best. I try. I try. It's just... Thanks for talking to us, dude. I had a great chat. Yeah. Have a good uh, good tea then. Yeah, I will do. I think I'm having Thanks meat and potato pie today. Ooh, lovely. Yeah. I think, well, I might have some sausages or something. I don't know what I've got. I'll have a, have a look. Anyway. Have some peppers. Thanks a lot then. Nice speaking to you. Thanks, dude. Catch you soon.